Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. If you're new to this channel, basically the deal is I'm an independent contractor and I work on the Inkscape project. But instead of doing things for large corporations, I instead do things for average users like yourselves. The way this works is people very kindly subscribe to my Patreon, my Ko-fi and my LibrePay and they basically buy my time to work on Inkscape specifically for the things that are most important for the average user. So the first thing that I do in these videos is I give a big shout out and a big thank you to everybody who's able to invest, and I mean that, invest in Inkscape through me and make Inkscape the best tool that it can be. Okay, so let's talk about some of the work that I've been up to. So as you probably are aware, for the past year and a half, I've been doing the CMYK and the color management and PDF work. Um, this has been quite a lot of work, and so it's worth catching up on where, where we are and how we're getting on with all of the different pieces that need to happen. Um, before we get into that though, I just want to mention all of the fixes that have happened since 1.4. So the previous video was the release video. We managed to get 1.4 out, out um, happy generally with the quality that we were able to achieve in 1.4, um, but there are still bugs. And so a big thank you to those who were able to patiently report those issues. Uh, we prioritize them. I fixed a couple of them, especially so stuff like crashes and data issues. Those are the highest priority to get out in 1.4.1. There's also a bunch of other issues that have been fixed by uh, PBS and TAV that are also going to be in 1.4.1. So fingers crossed the next version of Inkscape, uh, the point release, will have some of those just um, problematic things that cropped up in 1.4 1 just fixed. Uh, this happens from release to release simply because we change so much internally for maintenance reasons and for coding reasons that sometimes features and stuff uh, get broken a little bit and we don't know that they've broken. Um, so we basically depend upon users reporting that those things have bust and then we have to prioritize them and fix them. Uh, okay, so let's get into the PDF and the CMYK work. So um, I know you're not supposed to do this on YouTube, but sometimes I see comments along the lines of, hey, why hasn't Inkscape had CMYK for the last 10 years or like why are we waiting so long surely this would be so easy to do or why don't you just use the code from Scribus or why don't you just use this library or this thing that exists or and so on you get the picture um well-meaning people I think uh, who want Inkscape to be uh, the best it can be but they don't have all of the information about what it is that Inkscape has to do in order to basically transcribe the format of SVG into PDF. And if it was as easy as using Scribus, I think we probably would have just done that. Um, but you'll notice that even when you open an SVG file in Scribus, it's not consistent. You'll lose a lot of functionality because there's not a one-to-one -one description between all of the features that SVG can provide you and all of the things that PDF can provide you. And a lot of the missing pieces have to basically be um, mimicked. Um, so why, how, why am I describing this? So the reason is, is because I've been working on the C++ implementation of the PDF exporter. So the idea is, is that Inkscape went down a blind alley of using Cairo, which is a library, to produce PDFs. And this PDF library can only do RGB. So it can't do CMYK, and it has a bunch of other limitations as well, which is quite frustrating. But because it's a blind alley, it basically means that you have to unpick some of the assumptions first, uh, which is what we've already done. And now I'm able to implement a brand new PDF exporter using a library called Cappy PDF. Cappy PDF is very, very new, um, and it's a pretty healthy, direct uh, implementation of being able to write PDF files out. And so far, you'll remember from a pre previous video, I did an implementation of the extension in Python. And the problem is, is that I ended up uh, in another blind alley, um, not being able to transcribe text correctly because I didn't have all of the information for, for types setting available in Py Python at the time. 
And so what I've done is I've gone back to using a C++ extension, which is going to be built into Inkscape directly. Uh, all of the uh, implementation details about compiling the code, uh, making sure the library is available, compiling the, the library, etc., all done. All that is functioning correctly. I've managed to produce some uh, pretty nice P P PDFs using basic shapes and colors, even some CMYK colors, which I'm happy about. Um, and now it comes the time of implementing all of those features, transparency groups, optional con content groups, um, you know, just lots of niggling things. And there is an added complication because Cappy PDF is so new, some of this functionality doesn't exist in the upstream library yet. So for instance, page labels, I have to go back upstream, implement them in C++ in Cappy PDF, then write a wrapper for the C API, because it has a C API, write a Python implementation because it's a Python library as well. So it, that's its upstream API requirements. Then write tests upstream. Then write a C++ header wrapper around the C li library. I know this sounds ridiculous. If you're a program, pro programmer, you're already going like, wait, what? Yep, this is, this is the, the way this library is laid out. Once I've done that, I can then bring that into Inkscape and then I can implement the new feature that I've written one, two, three, four, five, five times, um, which you can say like it, it does take a lot of energy, like emotional energy as well to have to write the, the feature this many times. Um, but I think this is the right way to do it. And I think so because Cappy PDF is going to be a much cleaner implementation of PDF. Um, and it's going to also make sure that if something goes wrong, we'll be able to identify uh, that it's an issue with the PDF output and fix it there. Or if it's an issue with the way Inkscape is transcri trans transcribing, we can fix it there without the two implementations sort of getting on top of each other. Uh, this is kind of the problem with the subscribers code is that it's all squished together in a way that's very, very difficult to unpick. So you can't really reuse the code. And the hope is, is that Cappy PDF will actually be a library that a lot of other tools will be able to use as well. And we'll have more open source projects able to actually output uh, CMYK capable PDFs overall. Um, okay, so I've been implementing PDF stuff. What's the plan? The plan is to basically continue implementing the PDF work. I have a battery of tests that need to be able to pass uh, all of the features that are required um, that e e even ba even the basic stuff like filters, uh, raster images, um, color management controls, ICC stuff, all of this stuff, and I consider this all basic stuff. All of this needs to be uh, properly implemented, properly tested, and then it'll go into a big merge request and it will be reviewed by other Inkscape developers. That's the plan. I think that this work is going to take uh, at least until the end of the year um, because I don't want to rush it and um, the amount of time that I've got to work on this isn't as much as I would like. But we will get there and I'm happy at least with the progress that we're ma making and that progress is being made. Okay, so the next thing is uh, please comment below about your experiences using 1.4. Um, let me know about the issues that you're having, if any, uh, or if you're just happy. That's good too. And um, please consider subscribing to my Patreon and LibrePay because it really does allow me to spend more time working on Inkscape. And um, thank you all for listening.